Did you know that the infamous Australian Olympic B-girl Ray Gunn was nice at BMX? And did you also know that that kangaroo dance that she was doing, that embarrassing kangaroo dance that everybody's talking about, it was actually a wheelie dance. She was actually mimicking herself doing the wheelie on the bike? Nah, 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 I'm just playing. That's just a Photoshop picture somebody did, posted up on Facebook, and I was like, yo, that's funny as heck, so I had to post it on my site. But the fact is, hip hop and BMX have had a long intertwining history throughout the years, especially when it comes to the hip hop element of b-boying, AKA breakdancing. In the early days of BMX freestyle, Flatland was just as popular as the other BMX freestyle disciplines. There was a BMX freestyle sanction called the AFA, American Freestyle Association, which helped competitions which included the three elements of BMX freestyle at the time which was vert, wedge, and flat. In the 80s, flatland BMXers would do rolling tricks, a lot of balance tricks all over their bikes, and hopping tricks. During that same time, hip hop was gaining popularity with LL Cool J, Public Enemy, Run DMC, and other legendary artists. B-boying was really popular back then, especially when movies like Wild Style, B Street, Breaking, and Rapping came out. So kids like myself at the time were heavy into hip hop and BMX. We were all experimenting with DJing, breaking, MCing, BMX freestyle, making beats, graffiti, and BMX racing. We saw BMX and hip hop on TV, and we wanted to do it too. Now the first BMXer that I can remember but that incorporated breakdance moves to his flatland routine was Eddie Fiola. Back in the 80s, Eddie was known for his amazing vert skills and was also real nice with the flatland tricks. One of his trademark flatland tricks was doing the moonwalk. The moonwalk, which was originally called the backslide, was a breakdance move that was made popular worldwide by the pop star Michael Jackson. If you didn't know anything about breakdancing or b-boying in the 80s, you definitely knew what the moonwalk was. Actually, actually, it was technically a move associated with popping which is technically not a breakdance move but that's just like saying a dirt jumper is technically not a bmx bike when we all know at the end of the day it's the same damn thing popping breaking b-boying b-girling is all part of hip-hop just like dirt jumpers flatland trials bikes 24 inch to 29 inch so-called wheelie bikes are all part of bmx but we'll leave that for the purists to debate about all right, so now back to the story. In the 80s, you definitely knew what moonwalking was due to Michael Jackson making it popular. So for the moonwalk trick that Eddie did, he would hold himself up on one side of the bike and shift his lower body backwards and mimic the moonwalk move. Eddie had that trick looking so dope and it was a crowd favorite. You can still find Eddie doing that trick till this day on his YouTube channel and BMX events that he attends. Now, another move, which is actually a b-boy move, was footwork. Now, footwork was one of those essential b-boy moves that you had to be nice with. BMX Flatland riders have footwork moves in their routines as well, but they were not the same as breaking footwork moves. That is until Dennis McCoy came around. BMX Hall of Famer Dennis McCoy, one of the greatest overall BMX freestyle riders, was nasty at Flatland. Dennis elevated BMX Flatland when he incorporated the b-boy inspired footwork breakdance move into his Flatland routine. Actually, fun fact, Dennis said that he stole that move from legendary BMXer and Hall of Famer Ron Wilkinson. Yeah, it was just kind of like like, when breakdancing was brand new, it was like kind of a take on that right? and just bring it to BMX. Dennis was also the first BMX freestyle pro to not only incorporate the hip-hop element of b-boying into the sport, but he also took the hip-hop BMX style even further. He gave himself the nickname DMC, which was inspired by Daryl McDaniels from the iconic hip-hop group Run DMC, who were huge at the time. And then from the popularity of Run DMC and BMX, plus the fact that Dennis was representing b-boying in his flatland routine and going by DMC at the time, led Dennis to landing a sponsorship with Adidas in 1988. So, so that was the early days of how the worlds of BMX Flatland and b-boying, breakdancing, and popping collided. Ever since that time, BMX Flatland and b-boying have been crossing paths on several occasions, most notably with Flatland versus BMX breaking competitions and exhibits held overseas. You even have b-boys incorporating BMX Flatland into their routines, like literally taking a BMX bike and doing breakdance moves with the bike. Not riding the bike, but having the bike on them while doing breakdance moves. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. The evolution is bananas, y'all. So let me know what you think about this phenomenon of hip hop and BMX intertwining, flatland BMXs doing breakdance moves, all of that. Were you one of those kids back in the day that wanted to become a BMXer and then wound up becoming an MC or, or maybe you raced BMX and decided to become a producer or a rapper? I definitely want to hear some comments from you guys because I know I ain't the only one that was riding BMX bikes trying to rap, make beats 
and all that stuff, all right? And also reading comic books and all of that. So let me know what you guys think about that. And with that being said, this is Al Kane, a.k.a. Crazy Al Kane, representing SugarCane.com, CACTV, the Pump Track Movement, all that good stuff, and other dope treats. All right, I'm out. And back to you, Billy.